What is the problem with sailboats? Why aren't they more popular? Why don't more people have a sailboat? We're gonna talk a little bit about sailboats and the challenges with sailboats. In this video, I'm gonna cover five main reasons why I think sailboats aren't very popular and why they might not be right for you. Obviously, the history of sailboats is a very, very long one. Sailboats have been around for thousands of years, probably. It was one of the first ways that we were able to travel great distances across water by using the wind to be able to power our boats. And over time, the technology has evolved and there's a lot more sophisticated ways to be able to sail now than there ever used to be. And one of the really neat advantages with a sailboat is obviously you really don't need fuel or you don't need much fuel. You know, sailboats give you the ability to actually travel the whole entire world. You can go anywhere in the world with a sailboat, you know, as long as you know what you're doing and you can even do it in a relatively smaller size sailboat. You don't have to have some 40 foot sailboat to do it. I've seen videos of people sailing in a 24 foot sailboat to Hawaii from the west coast of the United States by themselves. And that's just something you can't do in a powerboat. Most sailboaters started out young. A lot of them grew up with a family that has a sailboat and they sailed regularly and they were out in boats a lot. So for them, a lot of this is second nature. They understand a lot of the art and the science of sailing. And for those of us who didn't grow up around those kinds of things, it's kind of a steep learning curve. And that brings me to my first point, which is this very steep learning curve to going into sailing. Before we bought our first boat, I was trying to figure out what kind of boat to buy. And uh, I was actually considering a sailboat. And I went to a used bookstore and I bought some books like this one here, Sailing Fundamentals. And I looked at it and I thought, well, it's not a very thick book. You know, this shouldn't be too hard. A couple evenings with this and I realized that this was definitely way beyond something I was going to teach myself how to do by myself. And the terminology and just the, the sheer number of things that you need to figure out and know to be able to sail is much more daunting than what you need to know for the basics of operating a powerboat. I've actually been out sailing a handful of times now and I understand some aspects of it, but I still am very far from being able to competently understand more about how the wind works and how to be able to operate the sailboat other than once it's underway, sort of being able to maintain a course. And that steep learning curve is not the same with powerboats because when I bought my first powerboat, we had it out on the water very quickly. And I didn't know much at all of what I was doing, but we were able to operate that boat, bring it out, come back in our creek here and put it back at our marina. And that was with me having zero lessons in how to operate a powerboat. And I'm quite sure that the same wouldn't be true if I had a sailboat as my first boat. Operating a powerboat isn't too much different from operating a car, other than the fact that you have no brakes and it steers from the back. But a sailboat is radically different from operating a car. And so for most people, just the idea of being able to figure out how to maneuver one of these things, especially in a, in a tight situation, that's a pretty daunting task and a very steep learning curve. Number two, the weather has to be just right. If you notice this morning here, there is no wind. This is a terrible morning for trying to operate a sailboat. You're not gonna go anywhere unless you're using a motor on a day like this. A little while ago, a power boat, a fishing boat just went by. They can go out and they don't have to think about that. If I was to try to take this boat out today, we'd be having to motor the whole time. We wouldn't be sailing. We'd be using the engine that's underneath the here. Matter of fact, they went out sailing in this boat yesterday and they were coming back from Baltimore and there was no wind. And so they had to motor most of the way back from Baltimore. So the weather has to be just right. And this morning is just a terrible morning for taking a sailboat out. There's no wind at all. So what's been your experience with sailing and sailboats? Please share that in the comments below. Number three, harder to do solo. Yes, people have sailed the world solo in sailboats. There are people who've done that. And there are people who go out on their sailboat by themselves all the time. But a novice like me can take my powerboat at any time by myself. And as long as I can turn the wheel and 
operate the throttle, I can take it out. With a sailboat, it's a bit more work to take out by yourself. Being able to manage all of the things that have to be done on a sailboat by yourself can be challenging. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I've had some opportunities to sail this summer is because some people who have larger sailboats like this one, they could use a hand. And the lack of speed. One of the things that people do not like about sailboats is the lack of speed. Even with a racing sailboat, you're not going all that fast. And a boat like this one here, typically on a decent day, you're traveling maybe six or eight knots. And of course, in a motorboat or a powerboat, you can attain speeds much higher than that to get to your destination a lot sooner than you can in a sailboat. So for day sailing versus a day out on a powerboat or a motorboat, you're not covering nearly the kind of distance that you would in a powerboat or a motorboat if you go out for the day. For me to sail down to Annapolis, that's a whole day to go down to Annapolis and back in a sailboat. When in a powerboat, I could go down there in the morning, have a breakfast and come back before lunch. And that's something you can't do in a sailboat. So a lot of times when you're sailing, it's the journey. And quite honestly, that discrepancy in speed has a lot to do with why powerboaters and sailboaters have a lot of conflicts out there on the water. There's been a rift for many years between powerboaters or motorboaters and sailboaters. I hear a lot of negative comments from both sides about the other type of people. A lot of people who have sailboats do not like motorboaters or powerboaters, and a lot of people who have powerboats do not like sailboaters. And number five, a lot of pre-trip and post-trip work. There's a lot more work to do to get ready to take your sailboat out, and there's a lot more work to do whenever you're heading back into port after sailing. You need to uncover all of your sails and unwrap everything, get all of those things set, and you know, get all your rigging sorted out and have all of that set up. And then whenever you're coming back in at the end of the day, you have to do the same thing again. And that takes a lot of time and it's a lot of work. And quite honestly, with a, with a power boat, you know, you come back into your slip in the marina, you tie off, you shut the engine off, you pull the key and you can go on in for the night. And with a sailboat, there's a lot more work that needs to be done because you can't leave these sails up and you really should make sure all of these covers are on here and everything before you wrap it up for the night. And whenever it's a hot, hot, humid summer day and you're coming back in and there's not any wind, it can be pretty rough having to get everything all battened down for the night whenever you've been out sailing for the afternoon. And if you're already tired and hot, that can, that can, be, that can be pretty tough to do. So here's another video I think you should watch right here. It's a good one. Thank you so much for watching this video and be sure to put your comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about sailboats.